Some punks jumped us. Who are you? Said they were looking for a little shih tzu. Then some other punk killed those punks. It's their blood. It's his puke. You, you want to go to the bathroom? Clean some of the blood and the puke off you? <sighs> There's a new movie opening in UK cinemas shortly, Seven Psychopaths, written and directed by Martin McDonough, who is the guy behind the brilliant In Bruges. I'll review Seven Psychopaths on the Radio 5 live show I do with Simon Mayo, two till four on Friday. But I couldn't let that title pass without giving you my list of the top seven screen psychos of all time. Here they are, in no particular order, Seven Psychopaths of the Cinema. Now, of course, no list of screen psychopaths would be complete without the inclusion of Anthony Perkins as Norman Bates in Alfred Hitchcock's definitive Psycho. Interestingly, Psycho was based on a novel by Robert Bloch, who himself was inspired by news reports about the crimes of the so-called Wisconsin ghoul Ed Gein. According to Robert Bloch, the real terror of Psycho came from the fact that the killer could be the boy sitting next to you. As for Ed Gein, he cast a very long shadow over cinema, influencing a range of screen villains, from Norman Bates all the way through to Leatherface in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. In fact, Toby Hooper said that every single one of the mad family in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre represented a different facet of the character of Ed Gein. When talking about his love for Michael Powell's Peeping Tom, Martin Scorsese said that it was a film that brilliantly portrayed the pathology of cinema. And at the heart of that pathology is the character of the Peeping Tom himself, played by Carl Boom. A fantastic line that always stands out from that movie. All this filming, it isn't healthy. When some people think of Hannibal Lecter, another villain incidentally who stands in the shadow of Ed Gein, they think of Sir Anthony Hopkins. But here at Kermit Uncut, we like to tip our cap to Brian Cox in Manhunter. There's a fantastic commentary for Mel Gibson's Braveheart, in which Brian Cox features, in which Mel Gibson says, this guy is a really great actor. I can't remember his name, but I kind of discovered him for this film. Yeah, Mel, some of us had discovered him a long time before that. One of the problems, of course, with doing any list of screen psychos is that that list may tend to be male dominated. But to address that balance, I'd like to include here Nurse Ratchet, Louise Fletcher, in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Now, I know that she's not technically thought of as a screen psycho, but just look at the evidence, look at the story. The whole thrust of that story from Ken Kesey's novel is that she is more mad, more psychotic, more dangerous than any of the people under her care. In fact, the central thesis of Kesey's novel is that the lunatics are all on the outside of the asylum. Apparently, the making of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest pretty much drove Kesey himself mad. There is a famous story that Kesey became so frustrated that he tore up copies of his novel and posted them through the letterbox of the film production office. For the most recent entry in our list of classic screen psychos, I'm nominating Christian Bale as Patrick Bateman in American Psycho. Now, in Brett Easton Ellis' source novel, the way we find out just how mad Patrick Bateman is is the moment when he starts to explain how Genesis became a lot better after Peter Gabriel left and Phil Collins took over the reins. As for the movie, actually a rather underrated movie, the real scene of psychotic craziness is when he axes someone to death whilst explaining how good the production on the new Huey Lewis and the News album is. For the darkest and most disturbing of all screen psychos, look no further than Michael Rooker as Henry in Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Directed by John McNaughton, the film was challenging fare, which challenged both audiences and censors. McNaughton said that one of the inspirations for his work were the news reports of the crimes of Henry Lee Lucas. Years later, Henry Lee Lucas found out about the movie and told the press that he thought the whole idea of it was completely disgusting. John McNaughton said that that was pretty much the endorsement he wanted. And finally, in our list of top seven screen psychos, we couldn't overlook Glenn Close as the knife-wielding bunny boiler in Adrian Lyne's film of Fatal Attraction, one of the most famous screen psychos of all time, and also the subject of one of the most famous changed movie endings of all time. When that movie was first made, Glenn Close's character committed suicide to the strains of Madame Butterfly, and then later, the police believed that Michael Douglas had actually murdered her, but when they first showed the movie to test audiences, audiences were so horrified by Close's character that when she was allowed to commit suicide, they allegedly screamed, kill the bitch. Producers of the film were so alarmed that they went back and reshot an ending in which she meets a much more violent death. 
Audiences were thrilled. Feminists were rightly alarmed. So there we are, in no particular order, my list of seven classic screen psychos. Did you agree? Who have I missed? What are your choices? Let me know. I like it. It's got layers. Yeah! I'm sick of all these stereotypical Hollywood psychopath movies. How about we change the title from The Seven Psychopaths to The Seven Lesbians, who are all disabled and they're really nice to everybody, and two of them are black. 